Okay, so we look at Nidhogg 2 at 21 by 9. On the surface, this game looks bloody weird, and yes, its art style is bloody weird, but for a game that appears to be extremely simple from the surface, there is a giant amount of fun to be had within. Unfortunately, however, and from a 21x9 perspective, things are very disappointing, as there is no native 21x9 support to be found, and no mod either to rectify this failing. This is another 2D game that would not be affected adversely from the extra visibility of the level on the sides, yet has been restricted to 16x9, and it's a shame because the levels are beautiful backdrops to your fighting. If ultra-wide support for Nidhogg 2 ever materialises, then I'll be sure to cover it here on the channel, and be sure to comment down below if you know of a fix to this, because I can't find anything as of yet. So we'll all just have to play this at 16x9 with that buzz for the time being. Performance-wise, it's a gorgeous game, but it's gorgeous in a very non-graphically demanding way. It could be run on a potato, so yeah, running it isn't going to be a worry for anyone. The other thing with this is that you must, absolutely must, play this with a controller. It is built around one and simply doesn't work without one, so stick one into your PC even if you are someone who never uses one, because this is worth it. Anyway, whilst the ultra-wide support might be a letdown, the gameplay certainly isn't. So, the idea is simple. You must kill your opponent, and each time you do, you can progress forward. In the single player, that means you can go right, but of course in co-op, that means you either go left or right, depending on the direction that you're fighting. After killing your opponent, you can progress forward until the opponent respawns, and once again, you must kill them. Succeed, and you can progress further again. They'll respawn, and once again, you must kill or be killed. And this continues over and over until you've progressed far enough to reach the end of the level. Of course, the difficulty is that when you die, you get pushed back, and so it's a battle to make sure you don't get pushed all the way to your end. Now, there is a little extra technicality in this wherein, if you kill your opponent, you'll see the arrow at the top of the screen show that you can progress forward, or of course that the enemy can progress depending on who killed who. This arrow shows the direction that can only be progressed in, so whoever's direction that is just needs to go in that direction, and technically you don't need to kill your opponent to progress that way. If the arrow is going in your favour because you won the last fight, you can jump over, or whatever method you like, and just avoid your enemy. You aren't required to kill them to progress. However, if you did die last, then you must kill your opponent before the arrow will switch and indicate the direction of progression has now moved in your favour. So, how do you kill your opponent? Well, the controls are extremely simple. Left analog stick to move, A or X to jump, depending if you're on an Xbox or PlayStation controller, and X or square on the controller to attack. That's it, there's no other controls. It's why this game absolutely must be played on a controller, because the analog sticks dictate all your movement. Pushing left or right on the stick will obviously take you left or right, but having the stick at 90 degrees will mean you attack your opponent mid-body, Pull the stick down to about a 135 degree angle and you'll be crouching and then you can attack low at the feet and push up to about a 45 degree angle and you'll be attacking at the head. This gives you three points of attack. You can also jump and if you attack as you come down on the enemy then you'll kick them and they'll drop their weapon and fall to the ground and that makes them an easy kill for you. If you have no weapon, then it's not totally over. You can disarm the enemy by getting in close and kicking them, and this can fling their weapon away. Then it's a quick fight to the death for the first person to kick the other person's head in. Of course, once you have no weapon in your hand, you can pick up other weapons on the ground as well, so be aware that the enemy might suddenly become armed again. Now, this brings us to the weapons. You have two different swords, a dagger and bow and arrow. Every weapon is an insta-kill. The second you come into contact with a blade, you die. That makes fighting super tense, and you need to block or avoid an enemy attack perfectly, otherwise you'll just be dead right away. There's no second chances. And to block, you simply need to match the enemy attack. If they went low, attack low to meet them. For something like the bow and arrow, if they fire, attacking the arrows will repel them and send them back the way they came. Now you can also chuck your held weapon. Up on the analog stick and hitting the attack button will have you chuck the weapon you're holding at the enemy. This will obviously kill them if it makes contact with them, or it'll just knock them over in the case of the bow. And this move can be worked together with all your other movements to create combinations that are really powerful. You can work out how to outsmart your opponent. It's fantastic fun. Fighting, whilst it seems easy at times, is actually a nightmare, certainly at the start, to get your head around it's very tough on you, and when you're completely new to it, and, well, at least for me, I kept dying a lot as I was outsmarted by the AI every time, but you slowly learn what to do and it's extremely addictive. 
The game has a load of levels to play through as well, and you can do this in arcade mode by yourself. The difficulty here is that once you start playing, you must finish the entire thing, otherwise you'll lose all your progress. Quit halfway through and it won't save anything. But it doesn't take too long to complete the whole thing if you're half decent. I'm only okay, and I managed to complete it in a run of 30 minutes, which felt quite solid, but I'm sure people can do it a million times better. The game also beautifully has a co-op mode with up to 8 players. Well, it's a two-player system, obviously, where two players battle it out at once on screen, but you can have up to an eight-player tournament all on local multiplayer, so you can have your friends around fighting it out, which is damned brilliant fun. If you want online multiplayer as well, you can do that. And this is where people will go, I'm sure, right after beating the single-player component. This is where the epic challenge will be. The AI in the game is good, but humans are just another level, so brace yourself when going in. Nidhogg 2 also has superb music, each level has its own track, well that's what I believe anyway after playing, and like I mentioned before, the art style to this is brutally gorgeous. It isn't supposed to be lifelike, but instead be this wacky, violent, kind of creepy looking world, and it fits the gameplay perfectly, and I really love it. And it would seem after reading online that I am certainly not in a minority with this school of thought. There are also a load of extra features to the game that you can use to make fights more interesting. Cheats. You can enable or disable a whole range of optional things that make life more difficult or just weird, like low gravity. And like with everything in the game, it's a lovely gameplay piece that genuinely adds value. No extra pre-order DLC required to access those cheats. All in all, if you can't tell, I've loved playing this and will continue to play it a ton. It's a perfect game to play alone or with friends, and with a relatively cheap price compared to full price AAA titles, it should most certainly be on your list of games to pick up soon. You'll not regret it. Well, from a gameplay standpoint. From a 21 by 9 standpoint? Yeah, that's depressing, with a WAF score of 0. Having the black bars is as frustrating as ever, and I truly hope someone can come up with a fix because I would, and I'm sure a lot of people would, massively appreciate the work. It would be fantastic to play this full screen. Anyway, I hope that gives you some information on how the game runs at 21 by 9 Give this video a like if you found it helpful, and subscribe for future info. For any of the games at 21 by 9 head over to my channel, the WAF website. Hopefully I've covered it. If I haven't, then leave a comment down below and I'll try and cover it. And if you'd like to support the channel, the links to my Patreon page are in the description, and Amazon affiliate links are there too. See you later.
Yeah. <laughs> 